Alright, so today I'm going to be showing off a little bit of an off-meta zero build. This is a build that entirely its purpose is to max out two fang so that it's always going to guarantee a proc. Now, for this character, realistically, the only two things that you genuinely need, equipment-wise, is at least a level 50 rogue comp to get that plus six two fang, and then a 34% shadow relic, which is available at level 62. You probably will want to wait until a higher level to farm one, because they are a little hard to get a perfect roll of, but it is available at that level. I have just a slag grenade on because healing is good, and then I have a sham on because I like to rocket jump around, but you could swap to a B shield if you really needed it. And then, yeah, for this build, it's basically a gun zero, just with maxed out two fang. There are a couple skills that you can really just kind of mess with on the character, but the staples are things like Fast Hands, Rising Shot, Death Mark, Innervate's kind of okay. Two Fang is like the skill of the build. Kunai is here. And then we're running this as a sniper build as well, just because Critical Ascension against raid bosses is super duper OP. And then we have Boar. Now, if you didn't want to use snipers, you could go ahead and spec more of this tree. You could get a skill like Like the Wind. This would be really nice for the build because this would give you a little more gun damage while you're moving around, which you usually are anyway. And then we have utility like Execute, where you can just rush over to something, you can knock things back, and that's super duper nice. So, using Two Fang to focus your build around is usually considered kind of a weird thing to do. But with Two Fang, essentially, every other shot that you fire is going to be equivalent to a 15.0 fire rate, I believe. And so that allows you to avoid worrying about fire rate of most guns and also makes weird interactions like Jacob's guns where it fires twice every single time and that allows you to have a super fast fire rate, stuff like that. And then even for slower firing weapons, you just get to get way more shots off way more quickly. And then you can focus more on like your crit and your mag size with something like your rogue here. So that's super duper nice. We're going to go ahead and test this against some mobbing. We will do armor, and then we will do flesh areas, and then we will probably also take it up against a raid boss, just to show off what the build is capable of. Washburn, classic place to test stuff. Throw out your kunai. Really, really nice fire rate you can get with that. And again, you don't really have to use like snipers and specific stuff like this. You could just use whatever shotguns you wanted. You could just play with whatever equipment. Just kind of see what feels good for your character. All right, so we've done some sniper gameplay. Let's go ahead and swap over to maybe a shotgun. Even something like a dog you could use with this build. So like this guy, he's already slagged. We get that big fire rate so we can go ahead and just chomp away at enemies. And it makes it really, really fun to mess with it. It also does mean that if you do have something like a drunk effect happening, you can go ahead and basically ignore it. Because every other shot is just going to fire out super duper fast with Two Fang. So we've done armor, now we'll go over here to Bloodshot. This is where a lot of people would test stuff like this anyway. So we'll head out here. This guy, I mean, he's an ironclad, but he's still got a face that you can crit. So we can go ahead if I can actually like aim, because that's not really like an issue with the build, that's just an issue with me. And you can see that with our fire rate and everything, this is super duper fun to use. Once again, you can run snipers. You could go ahead and swap over to like a shotgun, for example. We'll use like an interfacer here. And the build works great. It's really good at what it does. It's super high fire rate. And on top of this, you could also use this build to rocket jump without having to learn how to do double shot. Because you always have that 100% chance every single time you shoot. You know your bot is going to shoot twice, so you can always predict what it's going to do. And that's super nice for moving around. Alright, so we're here at Terra. We're going to go ahead and swap over to a B-Shield since this is a raid boss. Now, 
the build probably won't be able to just like be super OP and carry you through a raid boss fight because realistically we're still in OP 10 raid bosses are still difficult no one's really gonna be able to say that their build is like the most OP for raid boss fighting unless you're Sal and you're using bugs realistically so he should just do really good solid damage we're not gonna try to like lie and say that he is super insane or anything but even that's pretty respectable at OP 10 I would say and then of course if you're running snipers you could use critical ascension as that is a really good way to stack a bunch of damage on zero super duper fast yeah like that's super respectable it gives you a really fun fire rate to mess with and it'll make you able to deal with raid bosses pretty well So yeah, I mean any build is capable if you are willing to hang out at OP-10. The main problem entirely is just the fact that at OP-10 everything is kind of artificially inflated to a ridiculous degree. But yeah, this build definitely can contend with most of the other ones that Zero has going on. Um, another note of interest. If you do want to try a different class mod, you could try a Killer Com because it has plus 5 to 2 fang. And then by OP2, you do have access to a 40% shot chance. So this would make it 100% still. So you could do this at OP2 and still get that 100% 2 fang chance. And then it would also give you ambush, it would give you headshot and killer. And then if you wanted to spec velocity, which I usually don't because I use a Pimpernel a lot, you could also do that as well. Now, if you're looking to progress this character and you want a little bit of help as to where to start, first off, I, I went ahead and I made this picture right here. You could spec your character entirely like this in the order that the numbers are given and it would be able to make it through the game pretty easily. So of course, decoy, you have to have that. You would work down towards boar. And then I would like to go down middle tree from there, picking up fast hands. And then you could work down. You go ahead and get all your skills like kunai and stuff. And then you could go down this tree to get execute. And then you could finish this tree for the sniper part. Now, of course, there are a couple of different preferences you can make. If you don't want one shot, one kill, you could go into velocity. But if you like to use a pimpernel, you probably don't want velocity. And then of course Unforeseen exist, Fearless exist, so you could go ahead and swap out Ambush for either one. And then you could go ahead and maybe spec a little more into Right Tree if you don't care for sniping. And then you could work down to like the Wind at the very least. You could also run this sort of as a melee hybrid build, but you won't get many of the plus to skills that like Backstab or Killing Blow or Iron Hand or stuff like that. So it would be a lot harder to do, but that is available. So yeah, this picture is here. If you want to just screen grab it, you can follow this. It'll get you through the game just fine. If you want to try different variations on it, you 100% could. My only recommendation is to get four before you fight Bunker in the first playthrough, because then you can just one shot him and that makes it an instant given fight. And then Kunai, would probably be my first capstone no matter what because kunai with death mark just gives you an insane amount of damage potential really early on and it can even just melt normal enemies in tvhm and even early uvhm so those are all pretty good for that and then as for the actual progression of the character you would start out level one to like level five or eight or nine or whatever you want to do you could do like the digi peak first mission you could go to commander lilith's fight for sanctuary dlc and get level five from having mordecai kill stuff you could go to tina dlc and get those missions done and then from there i like to go from level four to level nine farming boom boom you push through the game until you can get a last go i would use that whenever i got that you could then push until you got the bloodshot and then farm bad maw to like level 13 14 if you want to and then push through bloodshot and then from there 
you could farm the Stormfront rats to probably level 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there. And then you would get your Mighty Morphin quest before Sanctuary gets put into the air. You would put Sanctuary in the air, and then you go to Caustic Caverns, farm XP from level 15 to 18. And then you can push Clan Wars until you farm that for a Slaga and a Maggie. And to farm that, all you have to do is farm specifically the boss of either family, and then save quit before too many mobs die. Because if too many die, that's when the quest locks in, and you can only farm one of the two. And then after that, you can go ahead and just push for bunker. You're playing zero and you have boar, so it should just be a free fight. If you're worried it will be difficult though, you could go do something like pirate DLC. You could get like a corrosive or a shock or even a slag pimpernel, and then those would all treat you really, really well for the rest of the playthrough. And then after bunker, you can go to King Mong. I like to farm a bada boom from him, so that'll be level 25, 27 ish. You can farm the bada boom. That will pretty much roll the rest of the game for you. You can use the bada boom plus your skyrocket to just wipe out everything for the rest of the playthrough. And then from level 28 to 30, you can farm more mutated Varkids in Caustic Caverns or Saturn, because Caustic Caverns does scale up, but Saturn is also there. You have Boar. It might be a good little practice thing. And then in TVHM, it's pretty much the exact same process. I don't remember all of the level values specifically of what level you will be, but it's a good idea that if an enemy doesn't give you about 10% of your XP bar per level, like per kill, you probably can just safely move on to your next farm. And then after you finish TVHM, you could go to Tina DLC and to go ahead and get your plus six to two Fang Calm. The plus six to two Fang is the main skill that really matters here. And then from UVHM onward, pretty much just push whatever you want to. I would go ahead and do pirate DLC early on so that you can try to bore farm Hyperius for some crystals. That could also be XP for you as well if you really wanted to try that. And at the very least, it's good practice. You might get a Norfleet, stuff like that. And then at level 62 is when you can get your 34% Shadow Relic. And that's when you have a 100% chance to two-fang from there. And then at OP2 is when 40% Shadow Relics become available. And that's when you could use a Legendary Killer with plus 5 or another class mod with plus 5. So yeah, that's the build. It's pretty fun. I like it overall. I think it's a good little break away from like the generic other like builds that you would use for a zero. And at the very least, it's kind of fun to rocket jump around with. So yeah, that's it. Bye.